뭔가 되게 많이 했다. 음. 그런 부분에 있어서는 진짜 감사한 것 같아요. 이제 역사를 빠르게 배우고 저희가 넘어가서 고등학교 맞아. 때는 필리핀 분들 이렇게 많이 도움을 주신지 몰랐어요. 필리핀이라는 나라에 대한 감사함을 느낄 수 있었던 순간이었던 것 같습니다. 네, 맞습니다. 안녕하세요, 한결입니다. 안녕하세요, 지민입니다. 오늘 보실 거는 왜 한국이 필리핀을 사랑하는가 라는 음. 제목의 영상이거든요. 어떤 내용이 들어가 있는지 같이 한번 보시겠습니다. The Philippines and And no, it's mm -hmm. not because South Korea is a huge investor in the Philippines, as we talked about in previous videos, nor is it because of the big, big influx of tourism and cultural exchanges, but rather one that dives deep mm -hmm. in the two countries' history. You see, bilateral relations between the two were established on the 3rd of March, 1949, making the Philippines the fifth country to extend diplomatic relations as a sovereign state for the Republic of Korea. But this is not where things get spicy. It was in the early 1950s when a war was being fought mm. between North mm. Korea and South Korea. North Korea had a backbone of strength in the beginning. After it initiated the war with support from China and the Soviet Union, it led a strong offensive battle. However, during these devastating and dark times, the Philippines were the third country to ever step up and send troops to South Korea. They sent the Philippine Expeditionary Forces to Korea, or PEFTOC for short, a unit that eventually comprised around 7,500 troops. These men were led by highly competent commanders, many of whom had experience from combatants of prior years. They stayed in South Korea over a five-year period, and among them were former President Fidel Ramos and two former ambassadors. But as the Philippines sent these troops to help South Korea, the Philippines was no better off as a country. It was still recovering from the devastation of the Second World War. Yet the Philippines understood the value of aiding a nation in peril. In fact, the Carino administration was initially against sending troops to Korea. But as many know, the Philippines had strong U.S. ties, which was a pivotal moment as South Korea was backed by the U.S. government. Many pro-U.S. legislators and even the U.S. government themselves had pressured the Carino administration. Many reasons were given as to why these legislators had wanted to send troops to South Korea, among them stating that they were on the side of democracy, not communist, to fulfilling their pact with the United States. Regardless, when these troops arrived in Korea, they had limited supplies and even weapons that were largely outdated. They were thrown into a climate they weren't accustomed to, with freezing winters that were harsh and unforgiving. Despite these setbacks, they fought valiantly. Their role wasn't just as a supplementary force. They were often at the forefront of major operations and defensive stands. One of the most iconic moments was the Battle of Yultong. Taking place in April 1951, located in Yonchen, the battle was part of the Chinese Spring Offensive. It happened after over 40,000 Chinese and North Koreans reached the UN battle line, which was guarded by the Philippine 10th Battalion. The Philippine troops numbered at a mere 900. The situation was then grim, and from every side of the story, it would look like the Philippine battalion would lose. How could a mere 900 troops go against 40,000? Most units in such a situation would have retreated or surrendered. But as the story goes, the Philippine troops held their ground. They fought throughout the night, disrupting the enemy's plans and buying time for other UN forces to regroup. By the end of the fight, the Filipino battalion did not just survive, but it became a monumental point in the war and saved countless lives. It was, as many observers stated, a Filipino victory. Another battle, known as the Battle of Hill Erie, in May 1952, involving the Philippines' 20th Battalion combat team, was faced with a numerically superior enemy again and challenging terrain near Chorwan. The Filipinos displayed remarkable tenacity and strategic skill. Tasked with capturing Hill Erie, a key vantage point, they leveraged their experience from the Battle of Yiltang, fortifying positions and planning meticulously. Despite fierce attacks from Chinese and North Korean troops, they successfully defended the hill, showcasing courage and military proficiency. And what's even more remarkable is that the Philippine troops didn't just fight, they also engaged in civil military operations. 
They assisted the local Korean communities in their areas of deployment, providing medical services and even helping to rebuild schools. It was an early example of winning hearts and minds, a strategy later adopted by military organizations worldwide. The contributions of the Filipino troops were recognized with numerous military honors, including the Philippine Presidential Unit Citation, the Korean Presidential Unit Citation, and several individual medals and commendations. South Korea has not forgotten their sacrifice, and neither should we. Memorials have been erected, and annual ceremonies are held to honor these brave souls. These men returned home as heroes, their deeds becoming an important chapter in the military history of the Philippines and a pivotal part of the legacy of international aid in times of conflict. Now, the war was one thing, but what came after the war was another. The war left South Korea in ruins. The economy was shattered, infrastructure was decimated, and the people were demoralized. Many countries pitched in to help South Korea get back on its feet, and the Philippines was one of them. Now, you might be asking, what could the Philippines, a country still dealing with its own post-war challenges, offer to South Korea? Well, quite a lot, actually. After the war, the Philippines continued its commitment to South Korea in a different way, through the export of human resources. Filipino engineers, doctors, teachers, and skilled workers headed to South Korea. Their mission was straightforward, but monumental. Help rebuild a nation. The Filipino workforce contributed significantly to key sectors. In healthcare, Filipino doctors and nurses played roles in setting up clinics and treating the sick. Filipino engineers and construction workers were instrumental in major infrastructure projects. At that time, South Korea needed to rebuild roads, bridges, and buildings, and Filipino expertise was right there, contributing to those essential projects. And then there's education. Filipino teachers went to South Korea to teach English, a critical skill needed for South Korea to engage in international trade and diplomacy. They didn't just teach language, they also taught essential technical skills that helped young Koreans to secure better jobs. These educational exchanges also had a cultural component, fostering goodwill and mutual understanding between the two nations. Moreover, the Philippines assisted in policy development. Many may not know this, but Filipino economists and lawmakers were among those consulted during South Korea's economic planning. They shared lessons from the Philippine experience, providing insights into agricultural reform, industrialization, and economic policy. This was collaborative work at its best. It wasn't a one-way street, though. The Philippines gained valuable foreign exchange from the employment of its citizens, and this remittance played a role in stabilizing the Philippine economy during tough times. More importantly, the bilateral relationship established a strong foundation for diplomatic and economic ties that both countries continue to benefit from today. Now, why is all of this important? Well, because the Philippine involvement in South Korea's post-war rebuilding is a sterling example of how international cooperation can bring about astounding results. South Korea went from being a war-torn country to becoming an economic powerhouse, and the Philippines played a role in that transformation. Today, history stands the test of time. South Korea is one of the largest investors in the Philippines. Koreans, as visitors, are also amongst the highest in the Philippines. It is well known that Koreans love to visit the Philippines. Some go there for education, while others for leisure. Furthermore, there is also a huge defense relationship between the two. The Philippine Army continues to use some state-of-the-art fighter jets, naval ships, and land force equipment from South Korea. These are evidence of the two's relationship. Last but not least, we must also never forget about the continuous investments in infrastructure from South Korea. The Korean government has been helping push billions of dollars over the course of the two's relationship lifetime in order to help address infrastructure deficits in the Philippines. Now, what stands out from these relationships is that, from time and time again, the help from the Philippines during the Korean War was always being cited. This just shows how appreciative South Koreans are to the Filipinos who helped fight for the birth of South Korea. That's <laughs> 그 남북 전쟁으로 인해 지금도 약간 휴전을 하고 있고 계속 어떻게 보면은 
전쟁을 안 한다고 하지만 규율상으로는 전쟁이 진행되고 있는 상황이잖아요. 휴전을 함으로써. 그거에 대해서 저희가 남북전쟁을 함으로써 많이 피해를 입고 막 그런 건물들이 많이 무너지고 막 사람들도 많이 다치고 했는데 필리핀이 우리나라에 와가지고 필리핀 분들이 많이 도와주고 군사적으로도 이렇게 제공을 해주고 또뭐 영어 교육 같은 것도 제공을 해주고 그리고 그런 부분에 있어서는 진짜 감사한 것 같아요. 음. 그리고 필리핀이 있어서 이제 필리핀이 그때 미국 분들하고 친했기 때문에 저희가 미국에 대한 지원을 받을 수 있었고 그리고 어쨌든 미국에 대한 지원을 받아서 저희가 휴전까지 오는 상황이 왔잖아요. 원래는 밀리고 있었다가 그거에 대해서는 필리핀 분들이 많이 기여를 했다고 저는 생각을 합니다. 뭔가 제가 하려던 말은 다한것 같아서 좀 당황스럽긴 한데 그러니까 이제 한국 에서 교육을 받을 때막 한국사 역사랑 이제 세계사 이런 거 배우잖아요. 근데 사실 저는 세계사를 과목을 안 들어서 이 내용을 모를 수밖에 없었던 것 같은데 반드시 알아야 되는 거를 따로 이렇게 교과서에 실어서 만들어 줬으면 필리핀 분들에 대한 관심을 한국 사람들이 조금이라도 더 갖지 않을까? 라는 그런 생각이 음, 들었어요. 맞아요. 근데 한 애초, 애초에 역사 같은 경우에는 그냥 남북전쟁이 일어난 시기하고 그리고 가장 큰 사건이나 미국이 뭐 도와줬다 이런 것만 적혀있지 필리핀이 도와줬다는 말은 이제 민주, 그러니까 약간 공산당이 아닌 분들의 도움을 받았다라고 이렇게, 이렇게 적혀있긴 한데 그거에 대해서 각국의 나라들이 자세하게 적혀 있는 건 아니거든요. 미국이 엄청 자세하게 적혀 있고 그래가지고 그거에 대해서는 이제 역사를 빠르게 배우고 저희가 넘어가서 고등학교 맞아. 때는 필리핀 분들 이렇게 많이 도움을 주신지 몰랐어요. 그리고 저희도 이제 이렇게까지 친한지도 모르고 있었고 이렇게까지 저희 나라에 방문을 하는지도 모르고 있었고 <웃음> 아무튼 이 영상을 통해서 좀 필리핀 이라는 나라에 대한 감사함을 느낄 수 있었던 순간이었던 것 같습니다. 네, 맞습니다. 구독, 좋아요, 댓글, 알림 설정까지 안녕!